Hello, everyone. Thank you for listening to this session. I'm Clemente Biondo, a tech lead and master solution architect at Engineering Engineering Informatica, or the way we call it engineering. I have 20 years of expertise in the architecture of large-scale distributed systems, uh, technical leadership, and project uh, integration. Uh, today, I'm here to talk about how Docker is helping the biggest Italian IT company continue business operation during the COVID-19 pandemic. A little bit about engineering. Engineering Engineering Informatica was founded in Padua on June the 6th, 1980, and it is leading a group operating in software and IT services. Engineering is the main Italian provider of digital transformation solutions. With approximately 12,000 employees around 65 offices throughout Italy, the EU, the United States and Latin America, the group generates approximately 13% of revenues abroad and manages IT initiatives in over 20 countries with projects for the industry, transports, telecommunications, utilities, finance, public administration and healthcare sectors. COVID-19 made its appearance in Italy with its first case on January 31st. By the end of February, we suffered 1,000 more cases. And on March the 9th, 2020, only nine days later, the total number of proven cases was nine times more. That same afternoon, our Prime Minister announced that Italy and its 60 million inhabitants would be on lockdown. We were allowed to exit our houses only to buy food and medicine or do essential work. My family world and mine changed overnight. The previous day, I was dropping my letter off at school and going to my office as usual. The next day, nothing was usual anymore. On the morning of March the 10th, I remember being on a queue outside the supermarket, wearing gloves and mask, and waiting patiently for my turn to be allowed into. I thought that this image, people in line waiting for food outside the supermarket, belonged only to history books, and now I was experiencing it firsthand. It was at that moment that my phone rang. It was the call to start our daily meeting, held at 10 in the morning every day, as usual. Usual was something precious, something I really needed at that moment. Over the following days, I realized that only one thing stayed the same. I was not able to reach my office, sure, but that wasn't a big deal. I'm part of a cross-functional distributed team of 10 people that span six offices and two countries. Pont Saint Martin, Padua, Rome, Belgrade, Vicenza and of course Palermo where I live. Here is a snapshot of one of our daily meetings. You can see the Kanban board we use to synchronize activities and create a plan for the next 24 hours. We are able to communicate and work remotely as a team thanks to the digital workplace platform that our company developed over the last three years. It fully operates on cloud and serves 12,000 professionals in more than 65 locations worldwide. By adhering to the Docker motto Build, Ship, Run, we were able to deliver value to the rest of the company, no matter how remote. We were able to run our entire infrastructure on our laptops, develop using real services, not just mocks, and run the same images with consistent behavior in the test stage and also production. That glimpse of normalcy, to be in control of at least that part of our lives, was a light that gave us hope to return to the normality. We committed ourselves to that light. In our darkest hour, we choose to shine our brightest light. Probably the hardest part to cope with was the rate at which everything was happening, its exponential growth. Here the curve is evident. Uh, this is Knowledge, an open source suite that runs on Docker, and it is powered by engineering. But change, especially when absent so quickly, is something to be always afraid of. Well, maybe not always. Which other kind of exponential growth we experienced during our lives? Something so massive that reshaped our societies, but in a better way? Yes, the more slow. The growth ratio predicted by Gordon Moore in the 60s drove not only the rise of the IT industry as a whole, but was also the growth trend of two companies which were able to adapt successfully to those rapid changes, Docker and engineering. Docker Hub went from 1 million image pools in 2014, the year it was launched, to 6 billion pools in 2016 and to 130 billion pools at the end of January 2020. 
Those numbers tell us that now we are living in the age of containers. Docker is now mainstream because it makes life of developer easier. It eliminates the it works on my machine problem. It allows to run a distributed system consistently between development and production environments. With Docker, our productivity as a team skyrocketed. A common scenario for us is coding against an external API, like for example a database or a message broker service. Before adopting Docker, we only had two choices, mocking out external systems, but Mox does not accurately represent how those systems would behave in a real world scenario. Or, the alternative, use the real thing. And that was not a good option either, since we had to install and maintain those systems, and unless we recreated it every time, our tests would be subjected to interferences generated by previous call or other external causes. Docker solved that dilemma for us. We are now able to make real calls against the containerized version of all the external systems we use, having best of both worlds. Thanks to Docker Compose, Docker Registry, and Docker Swarm, we are able to start, in a matter of seconds, an entire distributed application composed of more containers, both locally, on our CI-CD pipeline, or in production. We can easily share and reuse each immutable image between different developers and different environment, dev, test, staging, and even production. We obtain consistent and reproducible behavior in an environment. This is an important prerequisite for automated testing and continuous deployment. We are confident that when a truly tested feature works on a developer machine, it will also work on production. This is due to the Docker's dual nature of being both a developer tool and a delivery and orchestration platform. In this sense, Docker is a true DevOps tool. Over the years, we followed an analogous growth trend, and believe me, it hasn't been without its challenges. This black swan wasn't the first and won't be the last crisis we will overcome. There were others, of course, like the financial crisis of 2008. Where do we draw our strength? How we learn to cope with such exponential changes? What can we learn from this experience? And lastly, is it still relevant today? My company was established with an agile mentality from the very beginning. In the book, The Secret of a Successful Italian Company, The 20 Years of Engineering, published in 2000, Sergio De Vio, our president at that time, explained that engineering has an original organization model. is a recursive composition of autonomous organization units supporting each other. Like a fractal that it is the same within itself, our business units can be in turn decomposed into other autonomous organization units that collaborate to reach a common goal. This process repeats itself till you reach the single person, autonomous in his work, not an automaton ruled from the outside. This kind of recursive structure, modeled like the cells in the human brain, is efficient, able to absorb complexity, and highly adaptive to change. In the 80s, that model was called a viable system. Today, we call it DevOps. This is a light motive in our industry. Like the old alchemists, we have the habit of giving different names to the same substance, and the same name to different substances. SOA and microservice are probably another example of this habit, two sides of the same coin. But it is not always an old game with a new name. Sometimes a new technology comes out and changes everything. And if you are agile enough, you can react to and explore that change. That's our story with Docker. At first glance, containerization may seem solely a lightweight alternative to full machine virtualization. But if your organization gives you the opportunities to explore and experiment in real-world scenarios, you will discover that Docker in fact has far more profound implication and carries a myriad of benefits. This was for us a key element in the development of our cloud-native application. In fact, containerization really means the ability to package a distributed application, to, to abstract it from the environment and to deploy it easily and consistently regardless of whether the target environment is my laptop, a private data center or a public cloud. Docker is an essential choice for us as it allows to increase deployment frequency, to reduce the failure rate of new releases whilst allowing us to experiment with different technologies fast in what-if scenarios giving more quality and control over the entire pipeline. For example, maybe you need to choose between Solar and Elasticsearch to add pagination and faceting to your application. 
both seem promising, but uh, which will really fit to your context. With Docker, you can experiment both with the real production data, therefore you will be confident with your choice. The adoption of Docker became a conscious effort made by our entire organization. This is proven by the fact that Docker courses and certification are part of our educational offer. Let's see how we integrate Docker in our processes. Let's analyze a use case, the Engineering Internal Information System Department, my department. The duty of the department I serve as a tech lead is to develop and maintain our company information system. We are called to continually improve and innovate our business processes. This is a key aspect for us. The business rules change continually and the software must follow quickly. The rapid growth of our group over the years forced us to continually improve and innovate to keep up with the pace of change. Like an hermit crab outgrowing its shell, a metaphor cited by our CEO Paolo Pandozzi at our annual kickoff, we underwent the major reorganization of the way we work. Those reconfigurations broadly match the latest three eras of IT. If you took a walk in our Palermo office at the time of the millennium bug, you might have met our team discussing about the next month's Big Bang release. With a monthly based release cycle, if a group of users asked for a new piece of functionality in May, they would have it released by the end of June at best. To solve that problem, we gradually reduced the length of the feedback loop with the users by increasing the frequency of the releases till we reach a weekly cadence. To do that, we have to move toward a test-first mentality, an holistic test strategy that over the years converged into a fully-fledged uh, CI pipeline. And then we hit a wall. We found difficult to advance forward. We modularized our monolith, but we lack proper orchestration and configuration management tools to fully decompose it into microservices. And despite our best efforts, our code behaved differently enough uh, when deployed in test dev or production to preventing us going from continuous integration to continuous deployment. To break that wall, we had to wait till Docker made his appearance. Docker empowered us to continuously deliver value to our users. Let's see how. Every time we start a new project, our first stop is the engineering production support team, an agile team made of seasoned professionals with skills that range from DevOps, CICD, test methodologies, application lifecycle methodologies, and tools. They provide guidance and advice to our teams through the entire product lifecycle. The next step is using our web-based project support infrastructure and activate all the project tools we plan to use during the project, like VCS, Artifact Repository, Docker Image Repository, Issue Tracking System, Code Quality Analysis Tools, Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment. This platform, seamlessly integrated with Microsoft 365, offers a wide choice of both proprietary and open-source collaboration tools. Our daily routine starts with a daily meeting. The daily meeting is a short time boxed conversation of 15 minutes max, in which everyone on the team have the opportunity to talk about what they did yesterday, what they plan to do in the next 24 hours, and can ask help or advice to the other teammate. Usually before the end of the meeting, we walk the Kanban board to see how we can improve the flow of value to the users. This fixed appointment helps us to synchronize our work, commit to the shared team goals, and it also reduced the need of other meetings. If a developer has completed his previous issues, he can pick another one from the board. The work issues are in form of user stories. A user stories is a small vertical slice of functionality that gives value to the user and can be completed in a couple of days. Each user story is accompanied by its acceptance criteria. Typically, such a work issue involves more than one team member, for example, a UI designer, a backend developer, or a domain expert. Depending on the issue, they can split the story into multiple subtasks, work in parallel on their area of functional expertise, or do pair programming together. On GitLab, we follow a branch per issue workflow. The feature branch is linked to the user story by the issue key. We branch from master, waiting for the fast green build, and follow a classic BDD, red, green, refactor cycle. Each couple of hours or so, we merge from master to reduce last minute conflicts, and when done, ask for a merge request. The merge request provides the opportunity to do peer review, 
before merging the branch into master. It's really a revolution for code quality and team awareness because different eyes catch different bugs and allows for asynchronous collaboration between developers. With continuous deployment, the risk level of the release depends on the quality of the test suite and the entity of the reversibility of the changes. It's particularly important to have an excellent code coverage, keep code complexity low, follow the open-close principle, use feature flags and make small but frequent releases. Code is developed by testing again containerized services, not mocks. To drive the orchestration of multiple containers, one for each service we are developing against, we use test containers to run the integration tests, Docker Compose to interact locally with the entire system, and Docker Swarm on production. For example, if we are developing a backend microservice that stores its private data on Postgres, we use a pre-canned image based on the official Postgres image available on Docker Hub, with the same database structure we have on production and a set of data that suits the scenario we are working on. This is an overview of the continuous delivery pipeline. The continuous deployment is triggered by the completion of the configuration management step. The merge on master triggers the CI pipeline, built, unit test and code quality. If the build is green, the artifact and the freshly built image are transferred on Nexus and on the Docker registry. Docker increases the reliability of the build by minimizing the interferences of external application in the built environment. The next phase is form the continuous delivery pipeline. File fast smoke tests are executed first to eagerly stop the pipeline in case of errors. System tests are executed in parallel against different instances of the image to speed up the AAT phases. Each test is executed against an instance of the same exact image built in the docker ship build phase. That is the same exact image that will be released on production if all the tests completed successfully. In the configuration management phase, the configuration metadata repository gets updated with the new version tags, for example, the, uh, the Ansible playbooks. Each stage of the pipeline is executed by agents based on Docker containers. Build, unit test, code quality phases are executed on a Docker container based on a Maven image. This agent executed unit test and static code analysis with SonarCube. By using the Sonar Scanner plugin, we can monitor the quality of the code base while it, while it evolves. With the Jenkins Docker integration plugin, we build the Docker image and publish it in the Docker registry. That same image will be used in all of the subsequent stages of the pipeline. We use Docker Compose as orchestrator for smock tests and integration test activities. Starting from the published image, we instantiate the containers that will be used to run tests developed with different tools Postman, Newman, JUnit, and TestNG. Smoke tests and sanity checks are executed first following the file fast principle. Then we run the other tests that can perform write operation and therefore modify data. To guarantee idempotence, so test reproducibility, each instance gets instantiated multiple times on parallel. We test web applications with Selenium. Thanks to the project Selenium HQ Docker Selenium, the Selenium infrastructure can run as a container, while it usually requires uh, servers with the user interfaces. Depending on which branch activated the pipeline, the Docker image gets shared and tagged as a release. The metadata in the configuration management repository gets updated with a new image tag. The Git repository hosts the Ansible script that triggers the release on the various environments by using Docker Swarm. Thanks to Docker Swarm, we perform a release with a blue-green deployment approach to ensure business continuity. We can use our web-based portal for instance provisioning and quoting. The Cloud Service Marketplace is the main channel to deliver the engineering hybrid cloud services enabling the customer to sell service provisioning of infrastructure, platform, and services. We use the cloud to drive the digital transformation for us and our customers by designing and implementing cloud technologies and services. To meet their needs for agility and flexibility, we leverage an hybrid cloud model that perfectly combines our four proprietary data centers, integrated with hyperscale provider services, to provide our multi-cloud offering covering IAS, PaaS, and SaaS. Our offering is based on our proprietary cloud service orchestration platform, which provides a one-stop shop for service configuration, orchestration, metering, 
and enable service purchase, billing and provisioning. A key element in the preparation of SaaS application catalogs is the Docker technology that has been chosen to facilitate the onboarding process of applications, providing developers and operators with an accelerator for application creation, testing and catalogs entries. Our hybrid cloud supports all our customers IT service needs, including private and public clouds, integrating legacy services and infrastructures, and supporting our customers' evolutionary strategies at the right time. In particular, we transform our traditional infrastructure business into a complete stack of managed and unmanaged public and private hybrid cloud services. We enable the digital economy of ecosystems by offering our horizontal platform to develop and transform new services and business solutions. We extend our vertical offering, leveraging our market and technology expertise and transforming our proprietary solution from on-premise to cloud. The main evolutions of our roadmap are proceeding both in terms of integration with information systems and with the evolution of the catalog. We're enriching the IS offer with new services, for example, disaster recovery and business continuity as a service. We're enabling new suppliers, Google, Alibaba, Oracle, to the ex adding them to the existing connector for uh, Azure and AWS. We are enriching the PaaS offering with new platform and container as a service by integrating Docker technology into a container management cluster system. We are creating new SaaS offerings to add to the catalog based also on Docker technology. The evolution of the PaaS and SaaS catalog is strongly focused on the use of Docker containerization technology, used both as a fundamental basis for the packaging of SaaS application and as a central element for the container cluster management system. Engineering in the Hub Multicloud portal uses Docker technology for the preparation of a SaaS application catalogs using containers. Through the portal, a customer purchases from a catalog, and here we see an example of the purchase of a WordPress instance delivered on a container. You choose the product in the catalog and configure it. Depending on the flavor chosen and the infrastructure provider chosen for the delivery, you then proceed to the purchase phase. Once the purchase phase is completed, the process to prepare in the virtual machine starts. The Docker runtime and the container are also activated. Once the preparation phase is over, it is possible to access the application and configure it through the administration interface. The Marketplace platform adopted Docker since early 2014 as a strong foundation for the software packaging and delivery tool. Developing a new module of the platform starts with a declaration of a Docker Compose file that contains all the necessary software dependencies for the developer to quickly start the developing of a new module and incrementally introducing new dependencies without requirements to manually manage them. The continuous integration we use is a container-based cloud service, Circle CI specifically that enable us to use Docker Images as the base environment where each build will run. One of the first steps of a build is to generate a new Docker image with the current code that will be used as a testbed for the automated integration tests run later. After a 100% successfully test execution, and only in that case, the Docker image gets pushed to a private registry with a tag corresponding to the incremental number of the build. This permits to have full traceability of what is going in production and avoid deploying known broken code. When code gets shipped to an environment, the logs of every container gets automatically pushed to a centralized gray log platform for logging and auditing. Software exceptions are collected by Sentry, a cloud service that automatically aggregates repeating errors and keeps track of the software version where those exceptions are occurred. Container resources are monitored with a Grafana Prometheus stack, leveraging the C-Advisor module that exposes system metrics for each running container, CPU, memory usage, network, I.O. We are not defenseless. 
In our darkest hour, we choose to shine our brightest light. We can help stop COVID-19 pandemic by doing what we do best, by using data. Engineering has joined the battle against the coronavirus with its ready-to-use biosurveillance system that runs on Docker containers. Hang for Bios, that's the name of our biosurveillance platform, helps public administration and health institutions to have a near real-time holistic view of contextualized information coming from different data sources. This way, public administrations and health institutions can better understand their priorities, define and apply epidemiological models, have real-time geolocation of clinical health phenomena, and predictive maps of contagion. The solution was developed for the Veneto region in northeast Italy, which has been heavily affected by COVID-19. What do we know today about the pandemic? It is a virus with very high transmissibility. An infected patient infects on average 1.6 to 2.4 people. The lethality rate is higher in the older population. Among over 70s, the number of deaths is 3 to 4 times higher than the average. The young population is much more likely to be infected by developing mild or non-existent symptoms making it one of the main contributors to the spread of the virus in the population. There is still no scientific certainty as to whether or not healing implies immunity and how long. There are still no definite time scales known for the realization of a vaccine. And also, estimating the actual number of contagions is a critical factor in the difficulty of identifying asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic individuals. The impacts of the pandemic are likely to be significant and prolonged. The risks we are facing are the collapse of healthcare systems, difficulty of facilities, especially intensive care wards, to accommodate all those infected, a global economic downturn, a collapse in demand, rising unemployment and consequent depressive economic loop, the stop of social life, more than 1 billion people locked in houses, and more than 770 million students unable to attend school, and also an increase in social inequalities. The challenges we are called to face now and in the next months are Stop the contagion, decrease and where possible stop deaths, making healthcare personnel work safely, entering the new normal, a social life characterized by new and strict rules of behavior but able to protect our health restart all production sectors ensuring the safety of workers, fostering the restart of the global economy to create new liquidity and increase demand. The biosurveillance system currently used in the Veneto region is based on the Digital Enabler platform and relies on various of its features. The Digital Enabler is a data-driven native cloud, an ecosystem platform designed by engineering's R&D labs. Today is one of the few fully functioning, ready-to-use cloud ecosystem platforms available in the market. It is our biosurveillance solution that maps and geolocates infected subjects who have come into contact with them and the presence of clusters that require high attention. Based on our digital enabled ecosystem platform, it is able to harmonize, synchronize, integrate, visualize, combine and associate data from different sources inform in real time about the state of the infected population infected, ill, deceased, hospitalized, hospitalized in intensive care. It monitors the spread of the virus among health workers who is infected and who is in isolation, highlighting the decrease or increase in operational forces. It provides a relationship service that, in the event of a positive case, identifies those likely to be exposed to the infection by contact between members of the same household, organization unit, or those domiciled at the same address. It identifies which of the subjects in relation have already carried out the test, and with what result, and who has not yet carried out the swab, identifying subjects most at risk by age, class, pathology, etc. It provides a service that, in the face of a positive case, identifies if the subject is a worker or a student, the date of the employer of the school, address and contacts in order to reconstruct the cluster of possible infected. And lastly, I would like to point out that this solution runs on Docker containers. We are all in this together, my family, engineering, 
the Docker community. Together, we will hold, adapt, and get better.